On March 28, 2025, a powerful earthquake struck Myanmar, sending shockwaves across the Southeast Asia. The earthquake was followed by 6.4 magnitude aftershock, and its effects were felt across the region. During the earthquake, a high-rise building under construction in Bangkok, Thailand dramatically collapsed. The footage quickly circulated across the world, raising critical questions. How did seismic energy from distant epicenter cause catastrophic failure in modern city like Bangkok? In this video, we will explore the seismic mechanics of the Myanmar earthquake, explore the tectonic setting of the region, and most importantly, we will uncover the engineering mistakes that led to the skyscraper's collapse. The 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake that hit Myanmar originated near the central region northwest of Mandalay. It struck at the shallow depth of just 10 kilometers, amplifying its intensity at the surface. According to United States Geological Survey, over 10 million people in Myanmar and surrounding nations experienced strong to severe ground shaking. To make the matter worse, a 6.4 magnitude aftershock followed within 12 minutes, compounding structural vulnerabilities in the affected areas. Official figures report at least 144 deaths and 732 injuries. Injuries, though some sources claim that the actual number of fatalities may exceed 3,000. Entire communities were affected, with extensive damage to residential buildings, religious structures and essential infrastructure, particularly in Mandale. The government has called for international aid and rescue operations are still underway. In Thailand, the damage was most visible in Bangkok, where a 30-story high-rise building under construction collapsed, killing at least 8 people and leaving over 100 missing. Other structures swayed and many residents were evacuated, but the bulk of the city's infrastructure remained intact. Myanmar lies at a complex and volatile tectonic boundary where the Indian plate is pushing into Eurasian plate. This collision is responsible for the formation of Himalayas and also drives a network of active faults in the region. A critical fault in this system is the right lateral strike slip sagging fault which runs north-south through the central Myanmar and accommodates a large portion of the plate movement. Seismic activity here is further intensified by subduction process beneath the Burma microplate and tectonic compression around the eastern Himalayan syntax. Additionally, the Andaman Sea exhibits the back arc tectonics due to subduction of Indian plate beneath the Sindo plate. It also generates complex stress interactions. Together, these geological processes make the region one of the most seismically active zones in Southeast Asia. Although the epicenter was hundreds of kilometers away, but the earthquake's effect reached Bangkok due to the city's soft clay composition and low-lying geography. So the buildings in Bangkok, especially tall structures, are particularly susceptible to the seismic wave amplification. A critical factor amplifying the earthquake's effects in Bangkok was the region's soft alluvial soil, which is deposited over centuries by the river. Although Bangkok lies more than 1,000 kilometers from epicenter, long-period seismic waves propagated through the earth crust and became amplified in the soft soil, increasing the peak ground accelerations. This phenomena is known as soil amplification, which explains why a distant seismic event could cause significant localized shaking. It also exposes a shortcoming in many seismic hazard assessments which tend to focus on local faults and nearby geological conditions. This effect usually occurs within 300 to 500 km radius, often overlooking long-distance wave impacts in the regions with vulnerable soil conditions. Due to Myanmar earthquake, one high-rise building under construction in the Thai capital collapsed entirely. Eyewitness footages revealed that the complex structure failure as the floors pancaked on top of one another. While initial speculation centered around the construction quality, deeper analysis pointed towards the specific types of failure. One is called soft story collapse. This usually occurs when the lower levels of the building have significantly less stiffness or lateral strength than the upper floors, often due to the open spaces or the weak column design. 
When seismic waves reach to such structure, the bottom floor becomes the, the maximum point of displacement, causing the upper structure to collapse like a stack of cards. Video footages and plan evaluations indicate that the structure had an asymmetrical arrangement of shear walls and slender perimeter of columns, which created the torsional movements and increased the shear forces in the column located far from the center of the stiffness. This setup is particularly dangerous in earthquakes as it leads to the original vibration, uneven load distribution, and potential aggressive collapse of the structural system. Also, the use of the post-tension floor slabs appear to have contributed to the pancake-style collapse where the entire floors failed in rapid recession. This type of failure is catastrophic and points to a lack of ductility and redundancy in the structural system. So several key factors likely contributed to the collapse of the Bangkok skyscraper. First, the soft story condition created a weak link in the building's vertical load path. Without sufficient lateral resistance at the lower levels, seismic forces can't be properly distributed, resulted in excessive drift or you can say shear failure. Secondly, the building may have been inadequately designed for the seismic loading. To prevent such disasters, engineers must adopt advanced seismic design strategies, particularly for the tall buildings in seismically active or soft soil regions. One of those approaches is called nonlinear time history analysis, which simulates the realistic behavior of structures under the dynamic loading beyond their elastic limits. These methods really help us in identifying the potential failure mechanisms, ductility demands, and crack propagation paths. Retrofitting existing soft story structures with shear walls, braced frames, or base isolators can significantly reduce the collapse risks. The government should also enforce the stricter site-specific geotechnical evaluations during the design phase, particularly for the high-rise construction. The early warning systems and real-time structural health monitoring can help us to provide crucial data that is required for the response time that can also give us enough time to evacuate the building or shut down the facilities. The most importantly, the structural engineers must advocate for the performance-based design that anticipates the rare but devastating events. So the earthquakes may be a natural phenomena. They are always going to be out there but structural engineers can help us to prevent those collapses. Thanks for watching the video. If you really liked it, then please go ahead and subscribe our channel for future videos.